Now, I'm aware of Mrs. Jones's diagnosis because I made sure I read the chart or talked to the nurse prior. I know that Mrs. Jones had a stroke and that it made her left side weaker. So she does not have a lot of use of her left arm or her left leg. Um, Mrs. Jones has fairly good trunk control, so she can maintain her sitting balance. Don't forget to use the transfer belt. Uh, the transfer belt has one side that does have teeth on it, if you can see the teeth, and one side that's simply another loop for the belt to go through. You want to make sure that when you place the transfer belt on your client that you're going through the teeth side first. Explain to her that this is just a belt for her safety and that you won't make it too tight. It does need to be snug. But make sure that you still can put your hand, some fingers behind it so that it's not too tight for them. Uh, if you have extra, you can tuck that in under the belt on the side so that it's not in your way. Now, what I'd like to do is I make sure that the bed is in a proper height so that my patient can get her feet flat on the floor. Um, and what I'd like to have you remember is that when you have a patient who's got one side that's stronger, you need to always transfer to that stronger side. Now with Mrs. Jones, her right side is stronger. So I'm going to position the wheelchair parallel to the bed on her stronger side. Before I move the wheelchair over, I'm going to swing away and remove the leg rest so that it's not in my way. And I'll do the same on the other side. I'll position the wheelchair so that it's in an appropriate spot for Mrs. Jones so she doesn't have to do too much of a turn during this pivot transfer. <clears throat> Make sure that you lock the brakes. So the chair is secure, and all I'm doing is explaining to Mrs. Jones exactly what I want her to do and how the, the transfer will be completed. So I would say to my patient, I'd like you to please move forward in bed if you're able. If she cannot do that, you can help by doing a little bit of a um, scooching motion with the safety belt. Now that she's on the edge of the bed, I make sure that her feet are under her. If she's got a weak leg, I want to block that with my knee so that that leg is not collapsing out on her. So block the weak side with your knee. Sometimes you'll need to also block the foot a little bit so it doesn't slide. What I would explain to her is that on the count of three, I'm going to help her to come to a stand. And notice I'm trying to use good body mechanics, bending my knees, keeping my back straight, and when I would uh, bring her to a stand, I'm going to ask her to reach with her good arm, with her strong arm, towards the arm of the wheelchair to help with the transfer. Okay, push up from the bed now so that you've got a surface to help and push from. If this arm was uh, not useful at all, I would just either, she'd either have it in a sling or I may ask her to tuck it into her pocket during this transfer so it's not hanging and... Um, irritating the joint. And then on the count of three, I'll have you push up and we'll turn and sit. One, two, three. And then I would remind my patient that they need to reach back for the arm of the chair and lower themselves slowly as I help them. Now when I want to get my patient back into bed, I just need to be aware that if she had a, a side that was stronger, I can't arrange the chair the same way it was when she came from the bed to the chair. I would need to take the wheelchair and bring it around to the other side so that when she's going from the chair back to the bed, she's again leading with her stronger side. That's very important to remember. You can see that uh, the patient is now sitting in a commode. A commode is just a portable toilet that's used at the bedside when the patient isn't able to get um, to the bathroom. I'd like to show you a transfer from the commode back to the bed and for this transfer I'm going to use the pivot disc that we talked about earlier. 
Just to keep in mind, a commode generally has adjustable legs. So you want to make sure that prior to transferring your patient, like we talked about getting the, the surfaces level, you adjust the commode so that it's at a proper height that your patient can put her feet flat on the floor and still not have to go up a large distance to get to the bed. Uh, the commode is positioned just like the wheelchair was, uh, parallel with the bed, so that she only needs to do a quarter of a turn during the pivot. What I'm going to do, this pivot disc that I briefly showed earlier, is just placed underneath my patient's feet. And um, this disc works fairly easily and it will accommodate up to 300 pounds. Um, all you do with this disc is make sure that you explain to your patient you will be helping them with this transfer. It only is to help their feet swivel while you transfer them. Her feet are placed securely on the, on the pivot disc, and I'll do the same type of transfer I did earlier. I would ha ask my patient to scoot forward on the commode, and that at the count of three, I want her to push from the arms of the commode and assist with coming to a stand while I help to transfer her back to the bed. Um, I'm assuming now that she has equal strength in both legs. Um, this isn't a patient that had one side weaker or stronger than the other. So I just need to be there to generally help with the come to a stand and the turn to sit. Okay, on the count of three, I'm going to have you push from the commode. And as you get up, I'd like you to reach for the bed when you sit. One, two, three. And hopefully you could see how that pivot disc just worked under her feet to swivel her so that she didn't need to worry about the lower part of her body. Now normally I would be right in front of that patient securely with the gate belt, the transfer belt, and helping her with that. But for the sake of the camera so that you could see, I was standing slightly off to the side. Um, that's how a pivot disc is used, and you may find times that you will need that to use that with a patient. But in general, it's the same type of transfer as any one-person pivot transfer. The type of transfer we'll demonstrate for you now is called a two-person assist transfer. Use this transfer when the patient is too heavy or the lift is going to be too awkward for you to do on your own. Then you would need to enlist the help of another caregiver. And what we're going to do is basically a pivot transfer, but there will be one of us on either side of the patient. I want to point out that during all of these transfers, you need to have the patient keep their hands in a position where they can assist with the transfer. Even if they aren't really going to do a good job at pushing, still cue them to keep their hands there and to reach for the other surface. That way it keeps their hands off of you. It's very unsafe if they're trying to reach around your neck or around your waist. Um, if they start to fall, you're going to fall with them. It can throw you off balance, um, and it's just it's hard on your joints, too, if you have somebody hanging on your neck. So you need to remind them to keep their hands where they are helping with the transfer and then reaching for the opposite surface. What we're going to do now is transfer our patient, the two of us, from the wheelchair to the bed. We'll each stand on the side of the patient. Our hands will be one in the front and one near the side and the back. And we will stand so that our feet will pivot easily as we move this patient onto the bed. Okay, we'd have our patient scoot forward in the chair, make sure that her feet are bent, or her knees are bent and her feet are flat on the floor. And then one of us would count on three and pivot the patient to the bed. One, two, three. And that type of a, a transfer works well when you just need somebody on the other side to assist you.